Cold and cranky with Web Tech. It is starting to snow in Portland, Oregon. I don't like this. So here we go. This video is going to be about the subject of not weaponry, but actually flare guns and flare gun adapters. Now this is a very specific thing. This could also be misused and used to do something really stupid, but here we go. On Earth, there are several different gauges that are used for firing flares. Uh, there's the 12 gauge diameter. There's 26.5 millimeter and 25 millimeter, which are so similar that you can kind of get away with using that one for both. Then there's 37 millimeter flares, etc. These calibers are the most common, and the metal tear gas types can become very, very expensive, up to $1,000 if you want to buy one. If you have one already, great. You can make a resizer. So let's talk about the 28.6 millimeter, 1.52 inch, 152 caliber variety. They're about like a 1.5 inch actual diameter Schedule 80 pipe, which means if you have the flares and you have that pipe, you could expediently use this to save your life. Just have to make sure the pipe doesn't interrupt the travel of the flare. The 37.0 millimeter diameter, 1.5 inch it's usually called, 150 caliber, 2 gauge, the other one's 2.5 or 2 gauge, AN and M8 Eureka Vacuum Cleaner Company designed and built flare pistols. Those can also use the same kind of pipe as a launcher if you have to. The reason I'm bringing that up is those are rather unusual to find, but and you can find the flares once in a while. You might be on a boat and not be able to find the flare gun. And it's called a one and a half inch pipe and the Schedule 80 one will do it. And it doesn't have to be very long, but warning, make sure it's, I would re recommend that it be long enough, like a foot and a half. That's 18 inches or so, or a foot longer than whatever flare you get. And some of them have really short stubby ones. And you fire it straight up, and you fire it to get help. If you're on a ship and everything else is screwed, this will be something you're very happy to find if you can find it. Now, you can make something of an adapter for it, so you could fire the 12 gauge flares if this is the only flare gun you have, instead of having the right flares and no gun, you now have the flare gun, but no flares, but you have a bunch of 12 gauge flares, which are more common. So you would look up or find or get a hold of on ship. You want to have these pipes around. Schedule 160, one inch pipe, has an interior diameter that matches the casing. So it'll fire easily. You just sand the inside of it. And if you're in an emergency, no one's going to care that you basically set up a piece of pipe in it as a sub caliber adapter or whatever. You could also tape up a Schedule 41 inch pipe for a, uh, a flare launcher conversion from 38 and 37 millimeter down to the 25 millimeter size because the interior of that will actually work as an adapter. And from there you could also then stick in another piece of pipe and subcaliber adapt that down to 12 gauge. You could have these pieces of pipe sitting within each other, it's not a problem, sand them down or grind them down a bit. Some of them would need milling. But if you only had the 38 millimeter or 37 millimeter one, you better make these pipe adapters. You'd only need two of them because there's only two other real standards. There's the 37s, basically one and a half inch and the one inch diameter, and then there's 12 gauge. Now, if you have the 25.4 millimeter, 25, uh, 26 point millimeter, that sort of thing, one inch diameter, or 100 caliber, or four gauge little teeny shotgun shot you know shotgun pistol looking thing you could use a sanded chunk of schedule 40 three quarter inch pipe standard for a four gauge adapter and this is a very com common thing to do with the Czechoslovakian adapters and that sort of thing and a bunch of others and that would get you down to the 22 millimeter 0.8 inch caliber 12 gauge diameters and the 12 gauge flare guns go for around 30 to 100 dollars if you buy a bare sound and sight bear banger it's 30 bucks and it can be 100 bucks for a real flare gun that's the orange one just buy the bear banger i'll have a link below now why am i bringing all this up you can also use a piece of tubing that's the a similar diameter to what i've described and make a flare gun yourself and own it there is a reason you can do this and it's really bass backwards but here we go <coughs> 
Is it legal to make a pistol that is smooth bore? Only if it's a flare gun. And it would only be able to work with flare gun cartridges like the 39, excuse me, 38, 37, and 25 and 26 millimeter diameters. So find a piece of pipe that'll fit these flares and then just make adapters. But, but doesn't that still make an illegal gun? Well, here we go. Those are almost exclusively used for firing non-lethal rounds, or they can be used for other things. There's a weird set of exceptions when we read back for ATF rules. These rules don't really mean anything because depending on which city you're in, if they have a bunch of deals with port crews or if they've had a lot of problems, they're going to either have very loose or very stringent laws. Then there's the... <coughs> These are really rare, but here we are. You could also make more adapters by using a 410 shotgun adapter thing for a 12 gauge stuck inside of this and fire the 12 millimeter uh, ACP, 45 ACP in the a little bit under like 11.6 millimeter uh, 44 special handheld flare gun cartridges. They actually made them for, for you know, pistols. They really did. And I'm going to get to why all this actually means something. The, um, the next thing down, way down, but not much way down, is the 11.1 millimeter 7 sixteenths screw together pieces that were used to make, I'm not kidding, a lot, of com a lot of countries decided to make sure the flare guns didn't look like a gun. They didn't have to. So they make them a single-use unit. And if they made a launcher, they're called um, Hunter's Signal Pocket Flare MK-79, uh, the M186 pen zip gun Hunter's Signal. They're about $37. Now, this is a very good option. It's cheap, but it's not as cheap as buying a $30 bear gun, bear banger. But these are weird because what they do is they use a threaded piece of tubing that's 7 sixteenths or 0.4375 inches of a 43 caliber, like a 42 caliber. Uh, and it holds a 209 shot shell primer necked up to shoot something that's almost exactly the same diameter as the interior of a 12 gauge shotgun shell. This is the necked up version of the flare gun I was talking about where you would make it to where it was ass backwards to where you couldn't chamber a shotgun shell. The idea was to make it to where you couldn't use it for that. And then you can read the story of someone figuring out, oh, if you take out the primer and drill it out a bit, you could put a um, actual, you know, 22 caliber pistol round in it, which got someone killed. And also these things will hurt a person just as badly as any other firearm. <coughs> and they're, they're literally, when you look at them, they're just a zip gun. I mean, it's really not much different than a pen or zip gun. They are also using the same thread and pipe and tubing diameters that people use when they suggest putting together, screw together zip guns with hollowed out antennas or, you know, metal straw or whatever, or brake lines. And uh, it doesn't seem like you can make these things in a way that doesn't break some rule. But again, anything like one inch to one and a half inch, you're golden because those are almost exclusively used for things like flare guns and tear gas. These are gas guns. But here's the ruling on this. If a live round caliber conversion kit is used in a flare gun, instead of it being any other firearm uh, that you could put it in, while in this condition, the United States ATF considers it to be a firearm and it puts it under the generic firearm uh, uh, organization. Not NFA firearm, just firearm. The converted firearm is then classed based on what it is. It's called a pistol if it's using a rifled barrel. So if you use anything that would ne normally use a rifled barrel, you're good. And as long as it's under 50 caliber, it's treated legally as being just a pistol. Now, why would this be useful? Um, well, you may have noticed none of the flare gun cartridges that side, they're all 12 gauge. Next, <clears throat> if it's a smoothbore barrel insert, it would be any other weapon, have a $5 tech stamp, and you'd have to register it and a bunch of other things, and every state's different. It would be subject to additional requirements by the NFA. It may also be restricted by local zip gun laws, even though the approved flare gun is literally based on a zip gun. So here's where we get the funny part. If a 12-gauge signal flare is in a $30 subcaliber insert, and then you take the insert with it and put it at combination into a flare gun only diameter of 37 millimeter, 25, 20, 26, whatever. Because you're using 
a flare gun cartridge with an adapter. That is the point when it still is declared a flare gun. Flare guns are still considered a not only a, a firearm, they're considered a destructive device because they fire an incendiary. So the ATF had to give rulings on, okay, if you need to do this, and you're only firing a flare or a blank, because that can be used to scare away a bear if it's used for emergency purposes or safety. And in some areas, you're required to carry that bear banger. You have to carry a bunch of blanks to keep bears from attacking you because they don't want you dying. If you do that, so long as no anti-personnel rounds are in the user's possession at the time while these pieces are put together, only the non-anti-personnel rounds may be possessed or used. That includes smoke and bangers. Now, here's the fun one. They're exempted from National Firearms Act of 1934 and are given special permission under flare guns and distress signals. It's a ruling. But only if you put the flare gun cartridge into the adapter and then put the adapter into the flare gun because that acts as a flare. But if you put the flare gun adapter in and leave it in, that shows intent to load a 12-gauge shotgun shell or whatever the hell. Now, the other thing is you could nest these within each other if you have the larger sizes. You could also build a 38, 37, 25, or 26 millimeter internal diameter, basically shotgun pistol, and just make sure it says flare gun only. That's it. The only requirement on it is that it actually be able to work, and you literally say that it is a flare gun. You just make because they're normally metal. They're almost never plastic. There are some that are plastic, and that's the Olin ones that you get. They're the blue and white ones. So. Next, um, <clears throat> the rounds are not considered destructive devices, but are not readily available to non-government purchasers. But again, there's a page where you can buy the materials, it's cardboard and gunpowder, and you can make your own. You don't want to do that. You, in many areas, you're going to have to have a pyrotechnics license because you're literally making fireworks. It's defined as fireworks at that point. These are basically considered shotguns that are used for pyrotechnic projectiles and are considered both a destructive device and an emergency device and a safety requirement in many areas. So, you can also look up other things like pepper spray plastic gun dimensions and conversions if you want, and look up all sorts of things below in the description. Now, why did I bring this up? Again, the, this video series that started not on this channel but the other channel started because somebody wanted to have a PUBG play toy, um, one with them as part of their costume, and found out that there's a bunch of stupid ATF requirements and didn't want to spend, like, I don't want to spend $100 on a flare gun. They're never really going to fire. And also, yes, you're not allowed to fire these to where they can be seen at all unless it's a distress situation. It's considered a, a false distress signal, and it will cause problems. However, under those conditions, you are legally permitted. This is a specific case of firing it down through a, a, a culvert or a pipe or something into water to test one or to expend old ammo. You can also turn the ammo over to the local police department if you want to get rid of it. Don't, don't just fire it. And if you're in certain areas, you're allowed to do it if you're in an area that's extremely public and everybody knows that no one, and I mean no one, is firing a distress signal. So again, I'll repeat, you can use these different metal tubing diameters to make these devices and only these devices because they're not chamberable at all in any actual weapon except tear gas and rubber bullets. And as long as you write flare gun on the side, the presumption that you're going to use it for something other than a flare gun, when it's literally a pistol, you know, a foot and a half long, that you made out of some metal tubing that's way underpowered for firing any kind of anti-personnel thing, you, it would be a real stretch to say you were trying to actually hurt somebody with that. And yeah, you could use this, misuse this as well, and make it into a 12-gauge or a 410 or whatever. But then again, at that point, you've expended enough air effort, you could literally build a street legal gun. And that's where this weird thing happens. If you permanently modify these things, including the 12 gauge, to be a muzzle loader only and use a 409, a, a, a 209 primer, it's considered a muzzle loader. It doesn't, they don't have any rules on it. A bunch of stupid rules. So if you're going to make a PUBG toy gun, make it an actual muzzle loader, like I was suggesting. And if you want to actually have a flare gun, one of these large ones, instead of spending up to $1,000 on a Czechoslovakian toy gun, basically, build a real one and save yourself a lot of money. But you're gonna have to stick with one and one and a half inch bore. Thanks for watching, have a good day, good luck with that. I'm gonna go inside and